Artifacts, stories, artwork, and interactive technology, they all combine to tell the history of the Jewish people in the largest museum of its kind in the world. Julie Stahl takes us on a tour of Anu, the Museum of the Jewish People in Tel Aviv. Anu, it means us. That's the name of the new Museum of the Jewish People in Tel Aviv. Its goal? Tell the story of God's chosen people from Abraham until today. It's the biggest museum of its kind in the world. So whereas there are literally hundreds of Jewish museums all over the world, this is the only one that attempts to tell the whole story. The museum combines artifacts, stories, artwork, and innovative technologies to tell the good and sometimes difficult history of the Jewish people like never before. CEO Dan Tadmore believes this story is relevant to both Jews and non-Jews. We refer to Judeo-Christian values as the bedrock of Western society. They are Judeo-Christian values. It's the things that we share. It's the values of the Bible. The museum covers 72,000 square feet of exhibition space spread over three floors. One aspect features interactives. So does your name come from the Bible? So let's punch in Jonathan. Here we go, and you will be happy to learn that Jonathan struck down the Philistine prefect in Geba, and the Philistines heard about it. Saul had the ram's horn sounded throughout the land. And this one shows how to make ethnic this Jewish foods from around the world. I think I'm gonna go for the stuffed leaves. Okay, let's go. So you get your list of ingredients, wow. but now you actually need to work. Uh-oh, okay. You begin by, by putting the rice in the bowl. So drag the rice into the bowl. Oh, okay. Add the ground now, beef. Add the ground beef. Great. Now you're gonna have to grate the onion. So grate the onion, go back and forth on the grater. So this is fun, but it's also, you know, you come away with a recipe. More than 50 original films help tell the various parts of the story. We're now on the historical wing. And this wing is a chronological track that begins with Abraham and ends with the establishment of the state of Israel and beyond. It's a seven minute huge projection that tells the entire story of Jewish migrations through the ages. The path begins with the sixth century BC exile of the Jewish people to Babylon. Until then, all Jews resided in one place. So for 2000 years and the present, Jews always live in diverse places and proceeds to include the first believers in Jesus. And of course, the first Christians considered themselves Jews because they were. And so this is that part of history. This diorama tells the story of the competition between this newly founded religion, the cross, in front of a synagogue. Visitors can learn about the Inquisition, how Jews in Spain were forced to convert to Christianity. Even though the dark chapters in Jewish history like the Holocaust are part of the story, Tadmore says the museum is about Jewish life. When we look at Jewish history and Jewish life, we refuse to do so solely from the position of the victim. Jews have not only been persecuted and survived. Along the way, we've thrived and flourished. The first Jews in North America established the first synagogue there in Newport, Rhode Island. This is a replica of a letter written by George Washington to the Jewish community of Newport, in which he basically says, the children of Abraham will always have a home in these United States. Wow. Tadmore's favorite item is here in what they call the Hallelujah Hall, dedicated to synagogues around the world throughout the ages. Most of the congregations represented are still in use. This was one of the biggest synagogues in Warsaw, Poland, Blown up by the Nazis, the leadership hid the holy items before the Nazis arrived and then secretly sold them to feed the Jews in the ghetto. So this is the actual object from a synagogue that was destroyed by the Nazis over 70 years ago. And it miraculously survived because a Swedish philanthropist acquired it. It somehow made its way to Stockholm, probably because you were able to dismantle it and send it and it has survived. The synagogue didn't, the congregants of the synagogue didn't, but the menorah did. And so you asked me about my favorite object. Tadmore says the museum is so big you can't see it all in one day, but that only encourages people to return again and again to interact with the never-ending story of the Jewish people. Julie Stahl, CBN News, 
the Museum of the Jewish People, Tel Aviv. What an incredible museum and an incredible experience. But take a step back from the museum. Uh, how has God shown himself uh, through the millennia? It's the only people on the planet that have survived as a culture for 4,000 years. The closest one to the Jewish people are the Han Chinese, and they go back to roughly 2,500 to 500 B.C. You, you look at that. How does a people survive, a culture survive, even when they don't have their homeland, even when they're scattered all over the face of the earth? This is God's story and his, his prophecy that they would return, that the desert would bloom again, and that once again Israel would be a light to the nations, an example of uh, what happens to a people when you devote yourself to the service of God. It's an incredible story, and I like to underline, it's God's story.